Hey, this is YBR with Curvatron. It's a game that's kind of like Snake, but it's actually really different. So we're going to start off in the single player adventure mode just because it's the first one on the list. And we're going to go to the very first level, which is going on an adventure. And I'll do my very best to explain the controls for this. It's a uh, one button game, which means you only click one thing. Yeah, that's all you need to do. And the way it works is you click once, then the snake goes one direction. You click again and it goes the other way. So if you click over and over, you can go on a roughly straight path. And that's... That's the controls, really. It's that simple. And your goal is just like the snake game that you've probably played before. Is Your goal is to collect all of the little dots. And every time you collect one, you get longer. So you just keep going like this. Now, one thing that's kind of interesting about this game, though, is you can't really just kind of wait to get to somewhere. You're always clicking. Because if you wait, you just end up blooping into yourself and blowing yourself up, basically. So I thought it was kind of interesting that that's the way it works. Versus like a normal one where you can kind of go in a straight line, wait for a bit. This one is always doing something. That's the first level though, nice and simple. Then it gets a little bit harder and you have like obstacles and stuff that you have to deal with. So here there's some stuff right in the middle. And if you touch that, you will lose. So you have to be very careful not to. And then you have to do things like this, which is not easy, but we can do that no problem. You'll notice that you can go from one end of the screen to the other, like totally seamlessly. There's no crashing into the edges of the screen. Those are non-existent basically. And there's that level, so we can go on to the next one. And I'm eventually going to get to a level where I'm probably going to fail it multiple times in a row if I was to try to record it. So then I'll probably stop right there. But the levels do get harder and harder with the uh, design of the level. Like this one, you have to be pretty careful here because you don't want to crash. So yeah, I was getting real close there, but I managed to save it. And I think actually the next level is the one I really will struggle on, isn't it? Let's just say here. So that's that level. Move on to the next one. Yes, this one's a little bit harder. Also, it plays music and it tells you the exact song name. I really wish more games did that. It said, hey, this is the song. You know, it's just nice and convenient. Also, one thing to be, uh, watch out for, if you do fail a level, it's easy to accidentally fail it instantly afterwards. Like, say I'm doing it. Oh, man, I messed up. And you click again right afterwards. You can just go like that. It's actually easier if you're using a controller. I was using my mouse right there. Let me grab the controller because I can demonstrate it better. Sorry about that. I actually had to plug in my controller because it wasn't plugged in. But what I was saying, though, is let's say you're going right here and you're like, oh, no, I'm a crash. And you're trying to click super fast to try to save yourself. You can pretty easily click restart and then click again to get yourself right into a wall. The thing is, though, whenever you restart, there's no rush. The key can just say, okay, breathe, take your time, and when you're ready, you start. Because there's no reason to rush in this situation. You have an infinite amount of time to actually get started. And then once we're started, we can go ahead and keep start collecting these up. And the key for me, I found, is just make sure every click has a purpose. And don't start clicking super fast unless you absolutely need to. Because when you start to click super fast, that's usually when it's like I start to get like bad and I'm more likely to crash. Now I've actually never completed this level before, but maybe this time we'll have a chance. This is the part that always gets me is going back through here. Not a chance. I will right, we'll try it one more time, but I want to try this multiple times to where you guys get bored. This will be the last try. And then we'll just move on to the next mode. So let's see if I can do this. Okay, yep, never mind. Uh, apparently, though, it gets harder and harder as we go on. I don't know how. This one says it moves. And then the next one says the, actually the snake snaps in two. So I'm really curious what those levels do. But I'm not good enough to get to them. So we'll just say whatever and take a look at classic mode. Now, classic mode is really a lot more like the uh, regular snake game where all you have to do is collect things. It's pretty simple. Eventually, more things will appear on the screen once you collect uh, about seven or so things. Oh, four things, I guess. So that, if we grab that, it'll actually shrink the snake up. And then we can keep collecting them. And these ones are counting upwards. You notice the other one was counting down, so you knew how many you had left until you completed the level. This one's just kind of a running total of how many things you've collected. Now those black dots, you do not want to touch those because those will also kill your snake, so you don't... So you have to avoid not only the snake itself, but those black dots as well. So we'll do this until we can't no more. And just for extra fun, we'll avoid the things that shrink us so we could be as long as we possibly can. So like something like this, then it's like, how are you going to get there? We really got to wait for the snake and we got to really avoid that dot. And then we missed it. So we got to wait, wait, wait. Oh, couldn't make it. So that's that mode. Next mode is ever growing. And this one, you basically are drawing a line. And your goal is just to draw for as long as possible until you eventually crash into yourself like that. 
So let's go ahead and actually do an attempt at this. Now this one doesn't actually start until you hit A, just like the normal mode. So you can really wait until you have like the perfect starting angle if that's what you're about. For me, I'm just like, you know what? Screw it, let's go. You know, the goal though is just to try to keep the line as close to po as possible to the last run until you run out of space. So, you know, just something like that. We'll probably actually, oh, I hit the top. We got my new high score right there though. There's also a multiplayer mode and it'll tell you what control each player has. So in this case, one is W, one is P and you can collect things which will make you longer. And your goal basically is just to outlast the other player. And you notice there are different sizes in the dots. I think it actually influences how much you extend. So if you pick up the big dot, you extend farther. And you'll notice that the outer edge of the uh, place is like going inwards. And I don't think that actually does anything because as you can see the other player is still perfectly fine. Although maybe it's because they didn't move. I don't know. I've never actually crashed into it. Okay, no. So that's just a visual background. So really, if you wanted to win easy, you probably just stay not moving and let the other person be an idiot and hurt themselves. I mean, that's what I would do. You know, I've never actually let that dot go to the middle, though. I'm curious what will happen. Like, I wonder if that just says draw, if that happens then. I don't know. Just going to let it play out and see what happens here. Just keep collecting things. The one thing I do like is this one doesn't have any of the obstacles, and you can collect tons of dots. I wouldn't mind having this as a one-player mode. I wonder if you can just choose this play as a single player. Okay, so it's whoever's longer at the end will win. All right, so it's basically a timer. See, I didn't play multiplayer because it's like, why would I play multiplayer? I'm all alone. You could have it up to eight players. You need multiple keyboards to do that, probably. You also have the ability to make a level, though, and it's actually pretty easy. You can just draw out whatever shape you want. It's like, there, there's my level. It's really super simple there. And you could choose where the guy starts. So you can say, I want to start it there. And I think you could actually um, have checkpoints. I don't know exactly. I mean, I, I, I do know what those were. Sorry. I, uh, those are like the adventure modes. So you want to collect this dot, this dot, then this dot. That's how that works. At least I think that's how it works. Maybe that's how points work. I don't know. I've never made a level, but you see everything I've done before you could do here. No problem there. I didn't, I like kind of played around with it, but I didn't actually get that deep into it. And then you also have statistics to say, this is how bad you are. In my case, for other people says, this is how good you are. Some settings as well. You can change up these things. Nothing super in depth or anything. Anyways, that'll do it for Curvatron. Kind of a short video, but it's a uh, pretty simple game. And I thought it was kind of interesting. So that's why I decided to make a video for it. There's also creative mode where it's just like drawing. You could go inside of yourself. It doesn't matter. So you can make some fantastic abstract art, I guess. Actually looks kind of neat right there. Anyways, until next time, this has been YBR. I'll see ya.